Hi everyone, this is Aurélie Neige from the University of Glasgow, UK, reporting for REM now at Zula 2021. So as rheumatologists, we all have been um, facing situation with uh, patients that had uh, difficult to treat diseases, especially in rheumatoid arthritis. Um, and I think um, the other challenge, not only in treating these patients, but is also to recognize them because the definition vary quite a lot. And, um, you know, something I think not to miss from this conference uh, was the presentation today of the new definition of difficult to treat array. Um, and this has been formulated by the EULA task force on difficult to treat array. So to be able to categorize the patient as um, difficult to treat, um, three items actually need to be uh, fulfilled um, according to the work. And so the three items are as follows. So one, uh, patients need to be treated according to the EULA recommendation and fail um, to respond to at least two treatments, biologic or uh, targeted synthetic DMAD of different mechanism of action. Uh, item number two, um, they need to, it's a, com it's a composite uh, criteria of five different criteria and the patient has to fulfill one or more. So the five criteria are um, at least moderate disease activity, um, this, some signs of active disease, um, also incapacity to reduce the dosage of glucocorticoid below 7.5 milligrams of um, equivalent prednisolone, uh, rapid radiographic progression and a reduction of their quality of life. Um, and finally, the third item is the disease management perceived as problematic by either the rheumatologist or the patient himself. Um, and, you know, not only it's important to recognize difficult to treat RA, but also it's important to identify what factors can contribute um, to uh, this phenotype. And um, importantly, uh, multimorbidity in RA has been described to have a negative impact on disease activity. Um, and it's been quite reemphasized uh, today in different talks, including Dr. Nani Kikforu. And if we needed another proof of this, Dr. Fleury in his presentation, OP0299, showed in a prospective cohort of over 700 RA patients that the total number of comorbidity, um, if it was inferior or equal to one compared to superior or equal to two, can uh, predict um, um, low disease activity or remission and six months with an important odd ratio. It's above four actually, so it's quite significant. Um, and um, also they use the rheumatic disease comorbidity index, which is an index of seven com most frequent comorbidities. And if it was zero compared to one or above, it was predicting a high improvement of over 0.25. Um, and during the follow-up of their cohort, they were able to uh, identify 22% of the patients that were subsequently characterized as difficult to treat RA. And they were able to identify basal predictors of difficult to treat RA in multivariate analysis. And these factors were to actually have one or more comorbidity um, in the rheumatic disease comorbidity index. Um, or a higher S diet, while uh, there were protective factors such as my male gender and seropositivity. So I think over the past years, um, there's been a switch of paradigm in how patients are um, taken care of uh, in terms of not only focusing on disease activity measures, but also um, striving for a more um, comprehensive approach, taking into account multimorbidity to provide them with the patient-centered care tailored to their need. And um, multimorbidity and comorbidities can either hinder or mimic an active disease. So I think the takeoff message from that is um, do look out for the comorbidities, recognize and target them. Um, so that was uh, Aurélie Nage for um, REM now and turn into rumnow.com for more reports and video and follow Aurélie Remo on Twitter. Thank you.